go to Peter Schrager. Let's start with Josh Gordon. Um, I don't think it works, and I don't get the Randy Moss comparisons, but, but, I mean, they're both very, very talented. What are your sources saying? Do you think it works in New England with him? Oh, well, I'll see how it works, but to the Randy Moss comparisons, you realize how insulting and disrespectful that is to Randy Moss and to Chad Johnson and to Corey Dillon and all the other guys who had great careers Josh Gordon has played in four games or 11 games over the last four seasons, and he has won one of them. Uh, This is not exactly Randy Moss. Now, here's what people are failing to realize. It's not fantasy football. It's real football. And the Browns bent over backwards to do whatever they could to give Josh Gordon every last chance. He had last chances with three different head coaches. He had warning after warning after warning. And like Joy said, he look, he, he had an opportunity to make a great season here with the Browns. He showed up Friday, was fine, showed up Saturday, and hurt his hamstring doing a promotional video on Instagram. And that's when the Browns finally cut bait. So you're not dealing with a generational talent who's coming in hot right now. You're dealing with a guy that the Cleveland Browns gave a million chances and said go. And if you think Belichick is going to stop what locomotive they have going on in New England to make sure this guy has a thousand chances, be ready. I would just say this. I'm sensitive to all the substance abuse stuff. I get it. I know addiction. I understand it. I would also say they're on a path, on a path to the Super Bowl, and if he gets in the way, there will not be a spot on that team. All right, so I, I said to start my show, the Bears special teams excellent, defense playmakers, uh, coach wildly creative. They're the Rams, except the Rams can score. I watched that game last night, and if you look at the stat sheet, the Bears had a 10-minute edge time of possession. Entering the fourth, the Seahawks had 80 yards of total offense, and that was a touchdown game. I felt like it was an indictment on Mitch Trubisky that with that coach, who's great, those defensive players who were remarkable, and those special teams at home on Monday night, that should have been a blowout. I mean, I, I, I... the ceiling on Trubisky feels incredibly low to me, does it not? It's an amazing situation because you know who was taken right after him at the quarterback position? Patrick Mahomes. You know right. who was taken after him? Deshaun Watson. So the Bears traded up to make Trubisky the guy. They gave him an offensive coach. They gave him Taylor Gabriel, Allen Robinson, Trey Burton. They gave him all the Khalil Mack. They got everything. Is he the guy? And last night, there should have been two other interceptions that the players just dropped. Here's what I would say about it. You mentioned Matt Nagy. Matt Nagy is one of the most creative play callers in the entire NFL. Yep. If you saw last night, in key situations, they put Trey Burton under center, and they also ran uh, some plays where Trubisky went out wide, and Taylor Gabriel took the snap. He will protect Trubisky. Trubisky until Trubisky starts delivering. There were some bad passes last night by Mitchell. I don't think he's in the same conversation as Patrick Mahomes yet, and I certainly don't think he's Deshaun Watson with his feet. I would say this, though. He might have the best play caller in all of football, not named Sean McVay, calling plays for him yes. and protecting him. I think the Bears will be fine because Matt Nagy is that creative as a play caller. No, the two teams I've watched, Kansas. we'll get to Kansas City in a second, but when I watch the Bears, I see the Rams. It's like they've got this new, yeah. clever playbook that nobody else in the league has the sets, the motion, the trapping. It's remarkably fun to watch. I want to say this before I get to Mahomes. This is unheard of. If if in the height of the Yankees, if Jeter Posada and Mariano Rivera and Andy Pettit had come out and all within a year said, we want out, trade me, I'll retire, we'd have fired Joe Torre. I got Big Ben, Antonio Brown, Le'Veon Bell in the last year. One guy says, I'll retire. One guy says, trade me. The other guy's like, I'm not going to play. At some point, do the Roonies look at the situation and say, we may have a coaching disconnect here. I mean, what's going on? You know, you say that in one breath, in the other breath, they're down 21 nothing at home, and Tomlin fires them up, and they find a way to tie the game at halftime. So he's a way to motivate these guys. I don't think it's a question about his ability as a coach and a motivator, and even X's and O's. What was fascinating about this thing with Antonio Brown, the original tweet that went out was from a guy named Ryan Scarpino. Ryan Scarpino was an old PR guy for yeah. the Steelers. He le- recently left, and if Antonio, he didn't tag Antonio Brown. He didn't tweet at Antonio Brown. He made his observation. And Antonio Brown, who's on the cover of Madden and showed up to uh, training camp in a helicopter this year, and it's maybe the most decorated player uh, in the entire organization, for him to be 
searching out tweets the day after a loss and responding and saying, trade me. And then today, I don't know if it's out there, apparently he wasn't out at practice on Monday. So yeah. something's weird going on in, in Pittsburgh. Bizarre stuff. And, you know, this is an old colleague, but really didn't at Antonio Brown on Twitter if you want to get into the mechanics of it. So he sought it out or someone told him. It just seems ugly, right? It seems muddy. It doesn't happen in New England and it certainly doesn't happen elsewhere. I, I was saying this. If I was out for laryngitis, I get my job back. But if it's a self-sustained... Uh, self-induced problem I create for myself and miss a month, then Fox Sports 1 has no reason to put me back if my replacement's better. Uh, Jameis Winston is not playing because of Jameis Winston. Does Dirk Cutter feel a pressure to replace Fitzpatrick? Because again, this is not an injury, Shregs. Jameis is out because of Jameis's uh, immaturity. Is, does Dirk Cutter feel from the owner and the GM, hey, you got to get back to Jameis? Or is he saying to himself, Fitz magic works, baby. We're better without him. I'm going to take you on a journey back to March when I spoke with J- Jason Light, the general manager of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They had a lot of looming contracts. They were going to spend a lot of money in free agency. I said, what is your first priority? He says, Mike Evans is my first priority. I said, okay, well, we got to beef up the defense. They were thir- he goes, Ryan Fitzpatrick's my second priority. This is before Jameis was suspended. I said, Ryan Fitzpatrick, he goes, he's going to be a free agent. We need to make sure he doesn't go to free agency. He is that much of a leader, and he's such a leader that I will put that priority over our defense, which was the worst in the league. These guys love Ryan Fitzpatrick. No one is happier for Ryan Fitzpatrick than his teammates and the front office. So I'm not going to put it in print. I'm not going to put it in ink. I will just say this. If Ryan Fitzpatrick keeps winning... Ryan Fitzpatrick will be the quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers until something drastically goes wrong. Wow. Little news there. Okay, that's good to hear. Now, finally, you came on our show a while back, and you made this prediction on Patrick Mahomes. (laughs) I want to play the tape. Go ahead. Run it now. Colin, I hate to hype this up like a summer blockbuster. The Patrick Mahomes era is about to begin. This kid is going to take the league by storm this year. And, Colin, everyone I talk to in Kansas City is like one of those things where they're like quietly like just like, all right, we're not going to be the ones to say it. Just wait. This is the guy that a franchise is really banking on. And, Colin, I'm telling you, because I know you love being on a stock early, get on the bandwagon now because every week there's going to be a pass like this. Okay. He's been amazing. (laughs) I mean, he has been. Pretty good. I mean, I like Sam Darnold, but in terms of raw arm talent, Darnold's not close to Patrick Mahomes. In just terms of raw throwing the football down the field. And you know I like Sammy Darnold playing Thursday here. But what, what is your takeaway yeah. on Mahomes? Is he, is he even greater than expectations to Andy Reid? Yes. Here's why it's so amazing. All right. This is a guy from Texas Tech, and the big knock on him was he runs the spread offense that's 700 yards at Texas Tech. It doesn't translate to the NFL. Andy Reid has a completely different offense for Patrick Mahomes built than he did for Alex Smith last year, for Donovan McNabb back then, and for Michael Vick and Kevin Cobb and whoever else. This offense, it's like the air raid offense. They went empty last week. I hate to sound like Greg Cosell, but they went empty last week 22 times. What does that mean? No running back in the backfield, shotgun, five wide receivers. You don't see that in the NFL. That's what he ran at Texas Tech. So they're taking the Kingsbury elements of what worked and what made Baker Mayfield transfer, what made Davis Webb transfer, because this guy was that good, and they're using it in the NFL. Andy Reid has built the offense around his skill set. It's a completely different look than what Alex Smith ran last year, which means there's no tape on him, there's no way to solve him, and these passes are incredible. I think it is the real deal. He's got 10 touchdowns, zero interceptions, and last week he threw six touchdown passes and five incomplete passes. It is something to enjoy. I think it keeps on going. They play the Niners this weekend, home opener, arrowhead on Fox. I'm telling you, watch out. This guy could shatter records this year. You Shrags, this may have been your best appearance. You just had so yeah, much information. God, you were really good this so, week. You were really so, good. Colin, how, how, good, how good is our Sunday show, though? Oh, it's so much fun. It's, the, it's, it's so good. We can't I tell know. our bosses that we have fun because they'll reduce our pay. <laughs> we just go and screw off for an hour on Sunday. Shrags, great seeing you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.